It's so nice to be here with you today. So nice to be here with you to pray. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Won't you please, won't you please, please, won't you pray for your neighbor? Welcome, welcome, welcome to this week's episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. I'm Father Ralph, and you found your way into my neighborhood. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our episodes. Uh, I drop them sometimes Sunday night, sometimes Monday, sometimes Tuesday, like today, and I've dropped it as late as Thursday, I'm embarrassed to say, but every week, no matter what, we will bring you a new episode which uh, reflects on the scriptures of the Sunday from the beginning of the week. And we are now the second week of Advent. And so that's what we'll be talking about today, uh, the scriptures. And uh, today is, the day that I'm dropping this episode, is St. Nicholas Day. And as I was uh, saying at Mass this morning, St. Nicholas has to be the most famous and the most universally accepted saint in our church. St. Nicholas is, um, well, you know, he became commercialized as Santa Claus. But if you know the story of the real person, the bishop, St. Nicholas, well, you can see how a lot of the attributes of St. Nicholas were kind of recreated uh, when Santa Claus came into being. But in uh, many, many parts of the world, today is a very special day because the children know St. Nicholas. And uh, the world has uh, turned to him as a patron saint for centuries. Uh, uh, he, uh, of course, is known for his charity, his charitable acts uh, for the poor and the needy. Uh, the idea of the bag of gifts going down the chimney, that came from St. Nicholas dropping bags of gold down the chimney of this poor family who otherwise would not be able to provide the dowry for the weddings of their three of their three daughters. And so St. Nicholas, uh, uh, we look to him as a sign of, of charity, as a sign of love and care. Uh, of course, he is just the patron saint of children everywhere. And... Uh, my favorite St. Nicholas story is when I was Master of Ceremonies at the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. as a seminarian. Uh, I was just one of a whole team of Masters of Ceremonies. So, you know, well, uh, Cardinal Baum, Archbishop at the time, was there for a special Mass about this time of year. And... Uh, the shrine, you have to know, is the largest church in the Western Hemisphere. You can fit more ping pong balls inside of the shrine than you can in any, in any other church. And if you're standing in the sanctuary of the shrine, which, by the way, is big enough to hold most of our churches in their entirety, and if you, so you're standing up there and looking down the aisle, it is a huge long aisle. And the reason I tell the story is because Cardinal Baum 
had processed down that aisle, and uh, he was sitting uh, in his place in the sanctuary, seated between two deacons, and, uh, well, there was an escape. A little, little munchkin, she got away from her parents. Now, I guess the parents, either they weren't paying attention or they never thought she would get as far as she got. But she started running down that aisle and she ran all the way up and uh, the sanctuary is like a wedding cake, you know, all the stairs. And she ran, scampered up those stairs and by now the parents had started to run after her, but they were hopelessly behind. And she made it all the way up to the cardinal and jumped into his lap. And the cardinal talked with the little girl and the little girl talked uh, with the cardinal. And uh, long story short, Cardinal Baum was a very brilliant, brilliant man. And uh, it was, I believe she was uh, speaking to her, to him in, in Dutch. And, and he was speaking to her in Dutch. They were having a nice little conversation. And finally, all embarrassed and red-faced, the father made it up to the little girl and took her by the hand and the cardinal shook the dad's hand and the little girl went with the dad back down that really long aisle to her place. Well, we were all dying of curiosity, but you know, we've got the ceremony to do and everything. So finally, when we made it back into the sacristy, uh, we asked Cardinal Baum, said, what 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 did she ask you when she jumped into your lap like that? He said, she asked me if I was Saint Nicholas. And we said, well, what did you tell her? He said, yes. I told her yes. I'm not going to take her 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 dream of meeting Saint Nicholas away from her. So, in the kindness of his heart and in her native language, he had a wonderful conversation with this young girl. Never, ever forgot his kindness, never forgot the faith of that young girl uh, running down that huge aisle so that she could meet St. Nicholas. So this is a day for children. And of course, you know, the tradition is that children leave their shoes out uh, and uh, the shoes get filled with candy, and it's just a, just a wonderful, happy, happy day. Uh, on Sunday evening, our youth minister, uh, Monica Elsie, she, uh, she organized, as she does every year, uh, a visit from St. Nicholas for our children. This was the first one at our new parish, St. John Neumann. And uh, uh, Billy Rosas uh, played the piano. I, I sang and entertained at the side of the piano. Monica read the story, invited all the children to sit up around her as she sat in her rocking chair and told them the story of St. Nicholas. And oh, they were just, just spellbound spellbound to hear the whole the whole story uh, by the way if you're not familiar with the whole story franciscan media uh, does what they call saint of the day and uh, you can find the story of saint nicholas online uh, with them uh, today well uh, when she was done telling the story down the aisle came saint nicholas and the children, as they realized he was coming in, they all got wide-eyed and they were looking. Uh, you know, they're seated now back with their parents and, and they're looking and just can't believe, here comes St. Nicholas. And the, our youth, our teenagers, uh, made little goodie bags for the kids. And so starting with the youngest and going up, up, up in age, they didn't quite get to 64, but what are you gonna do, you know? Uh, the kids got their little goodie bags, and, and it was so wonderful to hear them saying, 
Thank you, Santa Claus. Thank you, St. Nicholas. Uh, was really, they had, uh, uh, and uh, you know why that image of the running child from the shrine was so uh, front and present in my mind is we had an escapee, uh, one of the youngest kids uh, in the congregation, but he wasn't running up to the front. He was trying to get out the back door. He was, wow, you know, he was, and he could, he could have started his own track team. It was really pretty incredible. Uh, so I got to tell you, I had a wonderful, wonderful evening. And so did the families. I can't tell you how many parents came up to us, uh, Monica and Billy and I and the kids, thanking us for making that night so special for their children and how much fun they had. And one of the parents said, I can't ever remember having this much fun in church, right? And that made me feel so good because, you know, when our youngsters have fun in church, they're much more likely to want to go back. And when they come back, they're going to bring mom and dad with them. And that's what church is. It's family. It's family. So if you went into that church Sunday night with a heavy heart for whatever reason, I guarantee you those children melted that heart of yours and you were young yourself again, filled with that childlike joy uh, that St. Nicholas brought into that church. So I hope, I hope that this day is a special day, a day that you uh, allow that inner child to, to come out. And if you have children or grandchildren, make sure you spend time with them today, tomorrow, uh, as Advent goes on, as Christmas gets closer, because I'll tell you, there's nothing like the joy of a child to pick you up from any gloom or doom you may be suffering from. I came home on Monday and was still, still just, oh, floating on cloud nine because of that experience with those children. So. I pray that this season of Advent will be a time for us to respond to the Baptist's call, which we hear in this week's gospel, uh, to prepare a way for the Lord. Uh, we're reading from the gospel of St. Matthew, the third chapter, verses 1 to 12. John the Baptist appeared, preaching in the desert of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was of him that the prophet Isaiah had spoken when he said, A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John wore clothing made of camel's hair, and had a leather belt around his waist. His food was locusts and wild honey. At that time, Jerusalem, all of Judea, and the whole region around the Jordan were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sin. When he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Produce good fruit as evidence of your repentance, and do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God can raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the ax lies at the root of the trees. Therefore every tree that does not bear good fruit 
will be cut down and thrown into the fire. I am baptizing you with water for repentance, but the one who is coming after me is mightier than I. I am not worthy to carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. He will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. The Gospel of our Lord. So, the call, the voice crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. And we repent to prepare that way, but it's not like went where the emphasis is on our sinfulness. The emphasis in Advent is on the promised coming of the Messiah. John the Baptist was the last prophet of the Messiah's coming and the only prophet in the New Testament and the only prophet who could actually point at Jesus and say, see, there is the Lamb of God. So, John had a very important mission, and that was to prepare all of us so that we would be ready for the coming of the Lord and that the Lord would have this wonderful straight path into our hearts, into our lives, and into our world. So, as we celebrate this second Sunday of Advent, as we remember the, the joy and the hope and the love of St. Nicholas, as we remember the, the, the children that he helped with his love and his charity as their bishop. You know, a lot of people don't know that St. Nicholas is also the patron saint of sailors because one of his miracles was appearing on a boat that was being tossed by a horrible storm at sea. And just like Jesus did in the boat with the disciples, St. Nicholas, with just a word, calmed the sea, quieted the wind, ended the storm, and saved, saved all those sailors, saved that ship. And so, he is also the patron saint of all those who travel on the sea, who travel by ship. What a what a wonderful what a wonderful way to continue our celebration of Advent. So prepare, prepare a way for the Lord. Make straight His path. Look to the children in your life. Even if you don't have your own children, no. you're probably surrounded by young people. So many places and so many ways. Let their, their unhindered joy and love fill you and lift you up. Because I guarantee you, no matter how heavy your heart may be, that joyful love of the children in our lives will save you and will raise you up. As John the Baptist says in this beautiful gospel, it's not enough just to say you love God. You have to show that love by bearing much good fruit. So there's your homework. Yeah. There's your homework. You know, bring the joy of this coming season into the lives of the children around you and let their joy fill you so that together we will be able to 
prepare a way for our Lord through our lives into our world. Good Lord willing, and the Crick Don't Rise will be here again next week with another episode of Father Ralph's Neighborhood. Until then, may the angels watch over you and protect you and guard you and guide you in all of your ways. May our Lord fill you with the power of his most Holy Spirit that you can bring that joy and that hope, that love and that peace of our Lord Jesus into the lives of all those your love touches. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.